it. This is Josh Valencia from Good Break Studios. Be sure to follow us at Good Break Studio and check out the website www.goodbreakstudios.com. So what we're doing in this video is that we're actually revisiting the de-reverberation test. The reason we're doing it is because I actually got a pretty cool comment from the CEO of Zynaptic, Dennis. And what we did after then was basically exchange a few emails. He actually um, actually sent him the files and he made some sweet custom presets here that I'm going to go ahead and use for this example. And uh, and then he sent me this awesome email, basically the best piece of customer service I've ever seen. This is his last name. I actually have it highlighted. Check it out. But um, just really, really good customer service here. It went through each knob and um, I decided to make a video since I finally finally know what I'm talking about with regards to this plugin, because it at first it did look a little daunting of a task to get through each one and kind of figure out because as you can see, some of the names on these knobs are completely new, not something that you know a compressor has or an EQ or really anything. And even this presence knob here isn't actually what you would think a presence knob actually is. So let's go ahead and jump into what all these things really are. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is this focus knob. What this focus knob dub does is that it actually is the main knob. For all, out of all these, out of all five of these, this is actually the main one. So if we were to put this all the way down or counterclockwise, this is actually listening to just the reverb in this example. So let's go ahead and listen to what, we, what we've got here. Um, I'm going to bypass this just to listen to the djembe track again. So again, that's a djembe about six feet away from a U87 in a pretty sizable room with some tall ceilings. So let's listen to it with the plugin. So you could definitely tell that it's doing a good bit and pulling out um, a good bit of that room. Again, this is just with the focus in the, in the middle. We're gonna go ahead and juice the focus. And listen to that. So again, we don't hear many artifacts, but at the same time, this is causing the plugin to work a little harder. So if I don't need it to work all that hard, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here in the middle. And what this also does is promote a more natural sound, a more natural feel, because nothing is really in a zero reverb type environment. You know, we don't want that feel. We kind of want this to sound natural. Again, it is um, a djembe, so I'm going to use it in music. So I need it to be sterile. Um, actually, I don't need it to be perfectly sterile. I want to take out some of that reverb and still give it some feel. In order to do that even better, Dennis has baked in this focus bias section of the plugin, which basically what that does is that it lets the focus knob focus in on what it needs to do. So the focus gets to focus. So what he's done here is made this nice curve. And what that's doing is that it'll it'll tell that knob, hey, I want you to really concentrate on de-reverbing in air quotes here. I want you to leave the meat of this instrument alone. I really want you to hear that mid-high, high frequency range, and I want you to concentrate on that. So that's essentially what the focus and focus bias do. So the next thing we're gonna look at is this localized control. This is just whether the algorithm looks more at the time domain, low values, or the frequency domain, high values. As an analogy, think of this as a number of bands. Similar trade-offs apply, for example, when using a multi-band compressor, the more bands you have, the stronger the processing can be. We could also get some oddness from the crossover filters. Conversely, you can leave fewer frequency artifacts by using a lower localize, but possibly run into some amplitude modulation and reduced de-reverberation. So basically what, what you're telling the plugin where you, when you're using this is how detailed you want it to be. The lower values, the time focus values are more looking at a more macro feel of how your reverb is working, working a little less. Um, if you were to crank it up, this is looking more at a frequency, getting into the minutiae of your signal and really pulling out the odds and ends. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this around and we're gonna listen to exactly what it's doing. Again, also listen to the fact that when it's higher up, it's doing a lot more number crunching and it actually gives it a more natural feel. Natural means, uh-oh, a little bit more reverb. So make sure that we're balancing this out. I'm gonna go ahead and start. So 
So we could definitely hear that it was doing something. You did hear that when it went down to more of a time focus, it was kind of just taking a sledgehammer to the reverb and being like, get out. I don't need any of you. But the more frequency focused was really, really honed in, giving a more natural feel. Again, there wasn't a ton of reverb there, but it was very, very natural. So the next thing we're going to look at is the refract. The refract lets the algorithm know um, how you decide to do the demixing, basically the separation from the dry signal and the reverb signal. So the next thing we're going to look at is this refract knob. What this knob does is that it actually determines how long the algorithm thinks before it decides how to perform the demixing, basically the separation of the signal and the reverb. So basically the lower values are the more um, like cut separation of the reverb and the dry signal. Sorry, the reverb and the, yeah, and the dry signal. While the, you know, juiced setting is more of a, again, more natural feeling, a little bit more computation involved, a little bit more natural sounding, a little bit more of the reverb actually in there. So again, basically refracting, whether you get more of the early, ref early refractions or the late ones. So pretty cool knob. Um, again, more of a balancing act to get the best sort of performance out of this. There's the adaptation. Again, I'm just going to read this off of um, Dennis's description here. Basically, it's tail length. And then he goes on to say it's not a tail length control, but rather tells the algorithm how to look at the reverb like stuff that has the shape and time frequency in space. That sounds pretty confusing. Um, he then goes on to elaborate to set this control, simply look at its representation on the display, which basically there is a, a field here. So if we were to check out the, the display here, the adaptation is that red bit right there. So if we were to look at its representation on the display and set the parameter to a value that results in the displayed envelope to roughly match the decay of the RMS curves. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and adjust this and see what we see what we see here. So we could definitely tell that we um, it, it made a huge difference when it, when it was actually going. So basically, values that are too low can actually invoke some pumping artifacts. Volume values that are too high can cause the signal components to be removed as the algorithm will still be looking for reverb to remove even though it's already gone. So basically what this is doing is kind of like if you're ever getting your head shaved, it's kind of like the thickness of the blade. We don't want to pull out too much, but at the same time, we don't want to pull out too little. Again, pretty cool. More emphasis on fine tuning. The presence knob, this is actually the most aptly named, but at the same time, completely different to what we're um, used to like on an amplifier what that presence knob what that presence knob does um, what this actually does is as adds a random modulation to the detection circuit basically the circuit listening <clears throat> and what it does is that it gives it a more natural feel so he he likens it to how we have a drum a drum beat that's perfectly quantized it doesn't sound quite right there still seems to be that out of time feel because it's just so locked in it's unnatural well this kind of adds some of the oddities back into the sound to give it better feel make it feel like it's natural so we don't want to hear that hey oh that sounds like it's been unveiled no we want it to sound like if it was recorded in a space that was perfect not full of reverb so that's pretty cool next we're going to jump into some of these buttons here so this is actually the separator um this will activate the um this will show what is being added or taken out so basically we could go ahead and listen to that so that's what the plugin hears on what it's actually backing out of the signal, which is pretty cool. You could actually fine tune that to get more or less into the signal. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this IO diff um, engaged and I'm going to mess with the focus and see if, what we hear from that. So that was actually pretty cool. We actually did just hear the reverb. I could definitely see using that as an effect um, when I'm mixing something, basically get the essence of a room and you can kind of separate that and EQ it on its own while you're leaving the actual um, thing that's being focused on. So basically in this case, the djembe, leaving that in focus and you can kind of tweak with the room it's in, which is actually pretty cool. Um, then there's a transient thresh and solo. This circuit allows bypassing. So actually transient thresh and solo. Okay, this is actually really, really cool. Um, this circuit allows bypassing the input signal transient excluding them from the processing and routing them straight um, straight into the output. So basically what this is doing is that it lets you get the transients and send them straight out. And then from what I'm reading, it kind of will blend it back
back into the the reverb signal so you're not losing that initial hit you're still getting that initial you know tack if it were a snare um and that transient is carried into the process signal so you still get the feel and the impact of whatever you're um de-reverbing but at the same time the tail of it is cleaner it's actually really cool so um i'm just, just going to finish off this uh email he wrote to us and see if we can kind of talk it through so um, one quick one quick way to find a good setting is to set the focus and localize to max refract and presence to zero this way you hear all the artifacts and then you could use the adaptation and localize and transient bypass very easily so basically what, what he's saying is that we could we could juice the focus and localize and then um put these all down to zero so put the refract adaptation down to zero and then i'd actually put presence down to zero because i want to hear it as robotic as it'll sound and get it sounding natural just by kind of messing with the presence knob but <clears throat> this way we hear exactly what the plugin can do at its max settings and then get it to sound as natural as possible or as natural as we feel comfortable with sometimes we want to hear things kind of messed up um not seeing that this will mess it up it'll sound musical but at the same time it'll sound different and kind of you know tweaked with so again um if i'm actually going to go through some of the different presets he set up for the same instrument that he's in a demo at AES. So let's go ahead and listen to those. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, enjoyed kind of the walkthrough of the plugin. It's a very powerful plugin, very intuitive and actually named incredibly well. It goes through and describes everything exactly to the T. This is all obviously available in the manual. And you know what? Dennis makes himself very available. So feel free to email him at the info at synaptic.com and he'll be sure to get back to you. He seems to be a... Uh pretty on top of his stuff when it comes to getting back to people on their plugin. So hopefully I get to check out some of their other stuff and put some reviews together about those. But until then, thanks for watching and follow, subscribe and do all that stuff. Thanks.